41st running of the Belmont, and they're off. Charitable man breaks in stride for the early lead. Flying Private is there toward the outside, Miner's escape. And then down toward the rail, Dunkirk is going to be forwardly placed. In the meantime, Mind That Bird has been taken back to last position and taken immediately to the rail by Calvin Burrell. So the field moves into the first turn now. And it's Dunkirk who will be the leader today. Dunkirk leads. Miner's Escape is second on the outside. Mr. Hot Stuff third through a quarter in 23 and two fifth seconds. Charitable Man is rating just off the pace today. He's fourth on the outside. Summerbird rides the rails in fifth. Flying Private is sixth. Chocolate Candy is now seventh, and Brave Victory is eighth. And then it's Love Gov who's racing ninth. Three lengths back to a cool and confident Calvin Burrell with Mind That Bird. They're in last position once again through a half mile that was pretty strong. 47 seconds flat, so Mind That Bird about nine lengths from a good pace up front. And that pace is being set by Dunkirk with seven furlongs remaining here in the Belmont Stakes. Miner's Escape is prompting the pace from the outside. Charitable Man in good striking position. Now running in third. Down toward the inside, it's Mr. Hot Stuff racing fourth and flying private in between horses. Down toward the inside, it's Summerbird. Alongside that one, Brave Victory is now called on for run. And then on the inside, Chocolate Candy. And second to last is Mind That Bird with five furlongs to go. He's seven lengths from the lead as they enter the far turn. Love Gov is the trailer. They've run three quarters in one 12 and two. Around the far turn. Dunkirk still leading the way. Dunkirk by three quarters of the lead. Charitable Man makes a bold run at the lead. And Mind That Bird's moving like a shot. Here comes Mind That Bird with a bold blitz toward the lead on the far outside. He's catapulting by horses. And now they're coming to the stretch. And it is Mind That Bird who has taken the lead. Charitable Man is second. And Dunkirk fights on at the top of the stretch. It is Mind That Bird fully extended by Calvin Morrell. Summer Bird is going to take a light run at him. Dunkirk is not done yet. Dunkirk comes right back. My net bird, and here is Summerbird, and here is Summerbird to win the Belmont Stakes. Summerbird, an 11 to 1 upset. Dunkirk finishing second. My net bird was third in the 140 first running of the Belmont Stakes. Sweet revenge for Kent DeSormo. A year after Big Brown was dead last, Kent DeSormo comes back and wins on the other bird. Well, a couple of things to, no to note here, Joe. Kit DeSormo was actually on the rail down the backside where Mind That Bird usually is. And Calvin on Mind That Bird, I think uh, his horse got a little bit rank with him. He let him ease up a little soon. And I think, if anything, the move might have been a little premature. All the pre-race focus, obviously, and rightfully on Mind That Bird, as you see him there, a son of Birdstone, the 2004 Belmont winner, but it was the other son of Birdstone, Summer Bird, who finished well back in the Kentucky Derby, but had an extremely wide trip in that race on a day that it was better to be down on the inside where Calvin was. You know, my biggest concern for Calvin on Mind That Bird was, to see, was for him to relax, and I think if I could see correctly, it was hard to see across the backside, but he got a little rank with him at the five furlong pole and pulled him up. Let's get down to the track to Caton Bradar. Pull him up close to the lead. Right, right now he's given some comments and a shout out to uh, the other bird. Uh, Kelvin, tell me what happened. Oh, nothing. I mean, uh, this went so, so slow up front, you know, and uh, I mean, I had to let him go a little bit on the backside. He was kind of fighting me a little bit, but uh, I don't know, I made the lead at the 16th pole, so I, Thought he was home free, and the other horse just got the box. You say he was fighting you, fighting you just a little bit. Uh, is that different from the previous races? Yeah, well, they backed him up so slow today, you know. It was unbelievable how slow they went, you know. And he kind of grabbed a hold to the bit, so I didn't want to fight him too much. And uh, I let him, you know, creep up easy. And uh, like I say, he run his race. He's a little tired, but he run his race. Your thoughts at this point on this final leg of the Triple Crown? I'm a happy baby. I'm happy. I love mom and dad to death, and uh, everybody back home. We'll get him next time. <laughs> Even in defeat, he has a positive outlook, Joe. Caden, thank you very much. There is an inquiry. The red light on the tote board is up. 
as Kent DeSormo will have to wait until this is made official to celebrate what would be his first Belmont. The inquiry is almost certainly regarding Dunkirk and Charitable Man. Dunkirk drifted out a bit into the path of Charitable Man in mid-stretch and, uh, and forced the rider to take up just a bit, Alan Garcia. And it doesn't involve the winner, uh, I think we can pretty safely say, at all at this point. Calvin Burrell referenced the fact that it, it, Mind that bird started fighting him a little bit, and that, as I said, he was in a no-win position because if you start strangling the horse and keeping him off the, off what he wants to do, you're going to wear him out just as quickly as if you let him run. But my point is that I think because of the, the fact that he got a little rank in the middle part of the race, and Calvin having to let him out, that he made the lead sooner than he wanted. Kent DeSormo, moments away from being official that your first Belmont is in the bag a year after what happened on Big Brown. I can only imagine, Kent, what this feels like for you. Hey, 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 you got me? You talking to me? Yeah, Kent, you were on the inside. You had Calvin Burrell's path down the backside. Talk us through the race a little bit. Well, I tell you, the horse, the coat broke like a, like a rocket. And I was like, wow, how come he's been so far back? You know, he uh, absolutely drug me around the racetrack. I had an armchair ride until I found some room. And when I found some room, he really just laid his body down. I tell you, this morning I left the house with a will to win this race. This race is about beauty, class, elegance. Reminds me of Sonia. Well, Kent, it, it, were you aware that Calvin was, his horse was getting a little rank with him and maybe he had to move up a little sooner than he would liked? No, I tell you what I realized. I realized that I was still on the armchair ride, still trapped with nowhere to go, and the horses in front of me weren't opening up. I could only hope at that point that when I did get a place to present this coat, he would increase his speed just marginally, and I would have a great chance. It worked out that way. He stretched it out. I'm so happy for Tim Ice. He's a family friend. We've had dinner together in my house many years ago. It's, uh, it's just all too close. My brother Keith, he's an assistant for my brother for several years, so I'm happy for him. The Louisiana boys, congratulations. Kent Tim Ice, a rookie trainer. Now for a veteran trainer, Chip Woolley. Janine's with him. Yeah, and I was watching Chip Woolley as he was watching the race of Mind That Birds. You were screaming, you were on your feet, and the next time I looked at you, you were sitting in your chair, dejected. What are you feeling right now? Oh, I'm awful disappointed. I, I think my horse uh, probably is the best horse here. We just made a little early move there, come up a little empty, you know. Uh, they said, Calvin said, he was kind of fighting him a little bit down the backside, but but you could tell when Calvin set him down, maybe a hair early, you know, but but uh, it's a judgment call out there, and uh, I pat him on the back when I see him. Well, you must have been pretty happy when you saw him drop back to last. He wasn't fighting him then. He got the rail. There, it was a pretty moderate pace. You had to be fairly comfortable at that point. When they flashed up the numbers, I thought we would win for pretty much for sure. I thought when they went fast enough, 20... 23 and 47 was fast enough to bring him back a little. Uh, thought we were in good shape, but I could see down the backside Calvin was letting him drift up. And when you let this horse do that, he's gonna he's gonna try to go, you know. And so uh, he'd have been better off probably keeping him covered up down on the fence for a while. And and but you know it's easy to say now. Uh, Calvin was out there trying to win the race, and we just got beat. Well, you have a win, a second, and a third in the three Triple Crown races. Your horse did a Not heck of a job. Where might we see him next, or have you even thought that far ahead? Uh, we've thought some about it. Uh, we'll, re we'll assess the horse and uh, maybe go back to Churchill Monday, rest him a little bit, and, and, and come up with a plan and announce that in a few days, as long as he's 100% healthy. Well, we'll let you go catch up with Calvin. Thanks, Chip. As for the inquiry, let's show you what the stewards here at Belmont are looking at. Well, Dunkirk right there underneath the arrow is going to drift out slightly right into uh, Charitable Man in the Pink Silks. Let's look at this one more time. Dunkirk underneath the gray horse underneath the arrow is going to drift out slightly. Well, he, are, he has already done it at this point, but Charitable Man's in the Pink Silks there, and he's the one that gets interfered with ever so slightly. I'm not sure this is actually going to calm down. As it stands right now, Dunkirk second behind Summerbird, Mind That Bird third, Charitable Man fourth. If there is a disqualification, of course, Dunkirk would have to be placed behind the horse he interfered with, allegedly, which is Charitable Man. So mind that bird, then, would be moved up to second. If, if so, there's a disqualification. I mean, now, this is critically important for everybody holding an exotic ticket, an exact <laughs> yeah. or a trifecta. There's a lot of money on the line here, especially considering that Summer Bird was 11-1 to 1 as the winner of the Belmont. 
And there's a happy winner on the far left. It's the man they call Dr. J. Calera called Jai Araman. He and his wife, Debbie, are the breeders and owners of Summer.